boxing logic regarding fixed fights. I'm going to try to make this quick, but don't blame me if it takes a little bit longer than that. It's one of them videos I really should have made an outline for, but I'm not that dedicated. And you probably don't care anyway, right? Here we go. So, if we're debating, and look, this is much bigger than boxing. So maybe you could extrapolate um, from this and, and not worry about boxing too much. But I have made the statement that you could make a very sound, uh, reasonable, logical case for Canelo's fights being fixed, right? Philosophically, not even looking at the film, right? Just philosophically. But as it is the case in any debate, I'm going to have to establish some premises, and you're going to have to, even if you disagree with me, you're going to have to grant me my premises. And if you don't, then we don't have a debate, right? Because I'm looking at the world of boxing for what it is. I'm noticing these things, and this is what I believe is happening. If you don't think these are, things are happening, right, then we can't, you know, you're not going to grant me any of my, uh, of my premises. We can't have a debate. Because my conclusion or my hypothesis is based on these certain things I believe to be true, right? But it would seem that the people that disagree that Canelo's fights are fixed, they want some kind of incontrovertible proof, like signed witness testimony, right? That his fights are fixed or you don't have any proof. Well, that's nonsense. That's not how this shit works. That's not how debate works. That's not how the court of law works. It is extremely rare that people get convicted with incontrovertible proof or confessing to the crime. Usually the evidence for and against is weighed against each other. And the more reasonable case, right, uh, the hypothesis that's more reason, that has more evidence, the weight of evidence decides the ruling, basically, right? That's how this goes. You don't need to prove that this or that guy murdered somebody without the shadow of the doubt, in order to convict them. You just need enough evidence. Yeah? So, if you agree with me that boxing is very corrupt, right? More corrupt than ever before, at least in my lifetime. Let's say last 30 years, I hadn't been watching boxing that long, but I have somewhat of an idea into not so distant past how it used to be, right? Robberies these days, it's like every single time there's a card, there's a robbery, it would seem, right? There's or some kind of controversy, something's going on, right? So these fights are fixed, right? A robbery is a fixed fight. That's it. Now, you could say that that's not the case, but then you're just being intellectually dishonest, and I'm just going to tell you to go kick rocks, right? I don't waste my time with dishonest people, right? Now... Seeing as the sport is more corrupt than ever before, I mean, more fights are getting fixed than ever before, right? And the problem with the stuff that's happening is that we only get to see a very, very small part of it, right? The stuff that's happening in the ring. And they try to hide it from us by brainwashing us with, us with commentary, using certain camera angles. Uh, in my opinion, I can't prove this, but in my opinion, uh, using even sound effects or like turning up the volume on one guy's shots and not the other guy's, right? But the technology they have today, that's real easy to do. So they try to manipulate us into believing that the guy that's losing a lot of the times is actually winning, right? They're trying to do everything they can to hide, to hide the truth from us, brainwash us to believe a certain narrative, right? If you can't grant me that, then you're intellectually dishonest in my opinion or ignorant and we can't have a debate, okay? So, this is what we can see, right? And they're still trying to hide it from us because it's out in the open. And then we have evidence of all this stuff happening behind the scenes, right? Dehydration clauses, loaded gloves, all kinds of corruption going on behind the scenes, right? Fighters taking dives. It's, it's well documented. This has happened throughout boxing history. Like, we know that this is what happens. We accept it, right? Everybody at some point in time has said that that guy has taken a dive or this fight was fixed, right? 
my goodness. So, and if they're trying to hide stuff that's out in the open, it's a lot easier to hide stuff that's behind the scenes, right? So we get a, only like a little bit of information of the shit that goes on behind the scenes. I think it's reasonable to assume there's so much more because that stuff is so much easier to hide, right? Now, if a fight is going to get fixed, right, going to be rigged, do you, you think it's more likely to be some small little fight that no one gives a shit about or it's going to be those, the, a bigger fight? Which fight is more likely to get rigged, right? Well, obviously, it's the big fights where all the big money is made, right? So the bigger the fight, the more of a chance of it getting fixed, right? Fixing happens. Boxing is very corrupt. Almost every single Saturday, Friday, Saturday night, there's some kind of controversy, some kind of robbery, some kind of bullshit going on, right? So whose fights in boxing are most likely to be fixed? Well, the biggest fights. Canelo, right? Canelo's fights. You could say AJ, but we're talking about Canelo right now. Bigger star probably anyway. If Canelo's fights... Logically, right? If you grant me my premises, if you don't, you're intellectually dishonest, go kick rocks. Canelo's fights, of all the fights in boxing, those are the most likely fights to be fixed. Now, if you think boxing fixes fights, and again, we already, if you're still here, you granted me all my premises, right? Well, then if any fight is going to get fixed, it's going to be a Canelo fight. But we all understand that his fights are fixed simply looking at the scorecards. But if I am to be intellectually honest, I have to admit that when I say his fights are fixed, right? I'm, I'm talking about the other guy taking a dive, at least in some instances. So I've taken it even a step further, further right? But if, if you look at the whole milieu, just as I described it, right? With Canelo basically reaching his level against Go aged Golovkin, right? Couldn't really beat the guy. Definitely lost the first fight. Couldn't beat him convincingly in the second fight. Old Golovkin, right? And we have evidence of them fixing his fights up until that point, right? Weaponized drug testing, him using PEDs, stacking gloves, uh, bad scorecards, so on and so forth, right? Short camps. We've had all this evidence of that stuff already. So now that Canelo is stepping up against even bigger challenges, right, physically, in a bigger division, Golovkin never beat anybody at 168. We don't know how good he is, if he could do that. Definitely not 175. But Canelo, basically, we found his level at 160. He was never the best in any division. Definitely not 160. That was his level. Not quite as good as age Golovkin. That so a lot of people say lost to Derevyanchenko. That's basically Canelo's level, guys. If we're being reasonable and honest... Maybe a little bit better, all things considered, blah, 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 blah. But that's basically his level, right? One of the top three middleweights in the world. If we're being honest, if you don't grant me this, then you're intellectually dishonest. Go fucking kick rocks. You're telling me that they've had to fix his fights to a certain degree to get him to that level. Barely, right? So we're... And that, that's... That, he topped out. That's it. He's not, he's no better than that. Now you're telling me they're pushing him another division and, and even two divisions higher up. And it's somehow a great leap of faith to believe that they had to rig these fights even more for him to win, right? People that argue that Canelo's fights aren't fixed, they, they, they only, they cherry pick one little thing that someone might have said, right? which in my opinion, when it comes to me, is a strawman argument because the reason why I said Sergey took a dive was not because he let Canelo knock him out. He just took that punch, right? It was everything else that happened in that fight. Just, just the simple fact that he didn't come to win. But these people will, will pick this least likely, least probable, little cherry on top of your argument, and they think that if they could uh, inject enough reasonable doubt into that, that somehow all 
the whole foundation of your entire argument sometime, somehow just goes away if they could just debunk one tiny little cherry on top. That's nonsense. That's not reasonable. And that's not even my argument anyway. So it's a straw man anyway. But they do that. They reject all these premises, right? Canelo's fights are not fixed. Someone was actually telling me this on BDA, making an argument for how Canelo won the first fight, actually, right? Or how it could have been a draw. These fights aren't fixed, right? These people have to reject this reality, this very, very sound base from which you're working on. And from there... It's a tiny little leap of faith to add to that, right? Okay, these guys are taking dives. Because Canelo basically topped out at 160 with his fights already being fixed to a large degree in order for him to... And then you look at his performances and he's even more dominant up there, right? Well, a very reasonable, logical conclusion knowing that everything that I've already said is it's very reasonable to say that, okay, the guy has to be taking a dive. And then you look at it and it looks like he's taking a dive, Right? He says, I'm going to collect the paycheck, and then he just collects the paycheck, quits after taking one good shot from Canelo, right? Canelo's promoter says before the Sergey fight, he's a four-time, four-division champion, right? He hasn't beaten him yet, but there, there they are saying it, right? Uh, the WBC made the Mestizo belt, right? Well, who's the Mestizo for the Saunders fight? Is Saunders the Mestizo? I don't think so. <laughs> they're telling you, literally, they're predicting the fight. They're so confident who's going to win, like they know the outcome. Canelo says, I'm going to knock him out in the eighth, maybe ninth, maybe tenth. He knocks him out in the eighth round. And look, if, if that's all that happened, it'd be like, okay, lucky pick, or you said you would do it, and you tried it, and you succeeded. If that's all it was, cool. But I mean, come on, don't ignore all the evidence, right? Canelo says, I'm going to knock him out in the eighth. He stops. Uh, Saunders quits, right? In the eighth round or something like that. And before even Saunders is in his, is able to walk uh, into his corner at the end of that round, Canelo's already celebrating. I mean, shit, he hit him with that punch and he was already celebrating right after he hit him. Like, like he knew he was going to quit, right? If I, if I say Bill Gates is going to die this year, and then I say Elon Musk is going to die this year, and then I predict some other person is going to die this year, and they all die this year, you think I'm going to get investigated by the FBI? Right? That's evidence. Of course it is. So, it's not a great leap of faith, given everything that you've already granted me because you're here, right? To say that, in order for Canelo to look dominant at, at even higher weights against bigger guys, seeing as his level is basically one of the top middleweights, right? In, with his fights being fixed to a degree, well, it's not a great leap of faith to say that his opponent is taking a dive, especially given all, all the other evidence I piled on top of that, right? And then you look at the predictive power of the hypothesis, right? Canelo's fights are fixed. People were getting excited for uh, the Callum Smith fight because Callum Smith was big. He was dangerous. Canelo could lose this fight. I mean, this guy hits like a fucking Mack truck. He's huge. We think Canelo's going to win, most of us anyway, but man, it's a dangerous fight. Can Canelo deserves a lot of credit. It's going to be a good fight, if nothing else. man. Both guys come to fight. It's going to be a good-ass fight, right? People who believe... These fights are real. They're not fixed. That was their prediction based on their belief, right? My hypothesis was that the fight's going to suck. The guy's not going to try to win. It's going to be an easy walk in the park for Canelo. And that's what it turned out to be based on my hypothesis that the guy's taking a dive, right? My hypothesis has predictive power. The contrary hypothesis does not. Then we come to Billy Joe Saunders and I'm saying the guy's going to check out. He's going to take a dive. He's not going to come to win, right? People are saying, oh, no, Billy Joe, that, that's like it is not Lara, man. Canelo's got problems with the style, right? They're assuming it's a real fight. He's coming to win. They're, they're looking at his skills. And that's reasonable, looking at his skill and, and making that prediction. I agree, right? But you're assuming the fight is real. I'm saying, yeah, okay, if the fight were real, that's cool. But the fight ain't real, so it ain't going to look like that. The guy's going to check out. Oh, guess what? He told us he was going to check out. Right? Speaking of predictive power. And then, you know, the hypothesis, fights are fixed. 
and this is what it's going to look like, right? Yet again, shows that it has predictive power versus the hypothesis that says these fights are real. But that fucking hypothesis sucks. You didn't predict this fight. You got excited for another shit fight. Again. The test of any hypothesis is to see what kind of predictive power it has. That's far better predictive power than this bullshit assumption that these fights are real. You're kidding yourself, right? So the case that Canelo's fights are fixed, the hypothesis is, is very reasonable, very logical. It's based on empirical fact, observation, witness testimony, admission, right? Uh, all kinds of suspicious stuff going on, so on and so forth, right? Is it incontrovertible proof? Well, no. But you don't need that to convict someone, do you? Of course you don't. So whereas my hypothesis is that the fights are fixed, the contrary hypothesis is that just to avoid uh, the problem with, potentially the problem with whether or not you could prove a negative, right, by saying, no, the fights are not fixed, well, let's just turn it into a positive by saying his fights are real, right? If that's the statement that you're making, and but but the people making that statement, right? They're they're putting the entire burden of proof on you. Well, you have to prove to them, incontrovertibly, that these fights are fixed, or stop talking about it because it hurts their feelings. Now hold on a minute. This is supposed to be a debate, right? Do you have any proof that his fights are not fixed? Any incontrovertible proof that his fights are real? Oh wait. You don't. All right. Well, given the fact that, you know, my hypothesis has predictive power and your, yours does not. And given the fact that I've given you all this evidence, which is where the predictive power comes from in the first place. My question to you is, what sort of evidence do you have to substantiate your claim, buddy? that these fights are real and whose hypothesis assumption not who can prove incontrovertibly what is true because neither I or you can do that let's be real I gave you a ton of evidence presented the predictive power of my hypothesis versus your hypothesis not having any so my question to you is given that I've given you all this evidence for my hypothesis, what evidence do you have for yours? And if you don't have any, or you don't have as much, and you're already in a huge hole you got to dig yourself out of seeing as, again, you don't have any predictive power behind your hypothesis. I don't think you have any evidence, but you let me know in the comment section. And if you are an intellectually honest person and you're still here and we've been debating this, right? Those of you that disagree with me, well, whose hypothesis is more reasonable? You don't have any evidence. Your hypothesis doesn't have any predictive power. If you have the evidence, support it, provide it. But if it doesn't come up anywhere near the level of the evidence that I have, and you still can't predict these fights because you're getting excited for bullshit-ass fights, right? I'm not saying predicting the outcome, but predicting how the fight actually plays out, right? Which, which hypothesis is more accurate in predicting what happens in these fights? If you cannot provide me with the same amount of evidence I just provided you with, and you won't be able to do it because, again... You'd be able to predict these fights if you had the evidence, right? Doesn't that make sense? But if, if you cannot provide me with a comparable amount of evidence to prove, to show that Canelo's fights are real, clearly my hypothesis is the more reasonable one. Neither one of us can prove anything, but I win the debate simply because I'm the more reasonable one.
and you're somewhere in the fucking weeds talking nonsense. And that's basically how you argue anything that you cannot prove without the shadow of a doubt, right? Here's my evidence. What's yours? You don't have any, do you? Thanks for watching.